Wow, this clover's amazing. Now that's what I call a bouquet. Who said that? Oh, you're awake. Had me worried. You were out way too long. Even considered giving you some white honey. Kinda hard to do with hooves, though. Roach? Your voice. It's, uh, interesting. Gotta say, I expected a young mare to sound... Uh, girlish. Based on what? Your vast experience with talking animals? Far as I know, I'm your first. Good point. Must be the brew that did this. Interesting side effect. Great, isn't it? You should take this stuff more often. Got so many pointers I could give you. Can't, sadly. Drinking this too often could prove fatal. Hey, know how you always show up when I whistle? How's that work exactly? Well, you're my human. Gotta be there when you need me. Yes, I'll be there for you, ooh, ooh, as the world falls down. Still kind of strange. How you cross the ocean when I call sometimes, but then get hung up on the tiniest fence. What's that about? Uh, what can I say? Everyone's got limits. Listen, got this contract I need to finish before the brew wears off. Right. Monster won't slay itself. Let me see. First up, I need to know what we're dealing with. Follow me, and try not to trample any plants or small animals. Welcome back to another Witcher lore video, guys. So I got a suggestion from this user the other day, and I thought that it actually seemed like a very, very fun video to do. I've got a lot on this week, and I thought this is just going to be a short video, and it's going to be a lot of fun to make, because it's just such a cool little tidbit of Witcher lore that would just be fun to cover. But anyway, in today's video, I'm going to discuss why Geralt calls all his horses Roach. I'm also going to talk a little bit about Roach and Geralt's preferences to horses. But anyway, let's get into it. So before I get into the answers of this question, you guys need to know a little bit more information about Roach, and its origins from a literary point of view. So to begin with, Roach is the English translation of the Polish word Potka, which I, I hope I'm saying correctly, I don't have a proper Polish accent, so I'm just going to go with that, which in Poland, as I'm sure you Polish people out there watching will know, is a fish. And this is quite weird, because for a lot of us English speakers, we think of roaches, we think of cockroaches, and that's what just instantly comes to mind, we think of a cockroach, we think of something that could literally take a nuclear blast. But it's not a cockroach in Poland, so the word it's supposed to be derived from is a fish. And this name comes with a lot of baggage for Roach. It comes with a lot about the personality and the name, and it shows why Geralt chose that name. So if you were to directly translate the Polish name for Roach, it would come up as something more endearing than, I guess you could just say, simple, blunt Roach. It would actually be more like, say, the name Roachy, which I don't know about you guys, but I could not imagine Geralt saying to his horse. <laughs> Another aspect is that this name is also considered feminine, and as we know, Geralt prefers mares over stallions, and this is due to mares being more cooperative than stallions. And it's quite interesting to know all that, that's just little bits of trivia and information, and some of that information is important to the answer I'm coming up with, but the bit about the stallions and mares is just interesting. And it's quite interesting to me because a lot of these little snippets of information about Roach are not really revealed in the English translation at all. And if you were Polish, you would read that and think, oh yeah, yeah, okay, I understand. But when you're English, I just think of Roach as being more of a tool for Geralt, except obviously that scene in Baptism of Fire, which I will not spoil for anyone. So anyway, I use this information and the information we already know about Geralt as a character to come up with a few possibilities for why Geralt calls all his horses Roach. So to begin with, there is the obvious one that I'm sure a lot of you have already thought of, and that is that Geralt simply can't be bothered to think of another name for a horse as he's just had so many, because you've got to think about it from a logical point of view. It's simpler for him to stick with one name to call all of his horses as he just has so many, as then he doesn't have to retrain his brain every time he gets a new one. The best example I can give you guys is that if you think about in real life, you might have had experiences like this in your own family. Family. If you've ever had any brothers or sisters, or I imagine if you're a boy it'll be brothers, if you're a girl it'll be sisters, you have relatives call you by your brother or sister's name all the time, be you the older one or the younger one. It's pretty much the same with Geralt. If he has multiple horses constantly and he has to think of a new name for every single one, eventually names do stick, but for him it's just simpler to call them all Roach, and then he doesn't have to think about it, and obviously Geralt's a busy guy, he's got a lot on his mind, and maybe he just really can't be bothered to put a lot of thought into it. And that's the answer that is generally agreed I'd say, but there is another one 
one that I came up with that I think may be a little bit more, I suppose you could say nice. So in Geralt's profession, as I just mentioned, he can go through a lot of horses. I mean, for example, I recently played the Price of Neutrality DLC for The Witcher 1 on my channel, and even there it says on his way to Kaer Morhen, Geralt's grey mare, who he also called Roach, was set upon by wolves. So he goes through a lot of horses in his time. So think about it from his point of view. He may not want to get emotionally attached to something, because they say as soon as you name something, you get an attachment to it. And you may be thinking, oh wait, no, but he names them all Roach. But to him, maybe it's just more of a, it's just something to call it. It's almost like a command. It's just Roach, don't do that. Roach, do this. Roach, do this. It's not really meant to be an emotional thing, which is why he doesn't put thought into it, which is why he just says Roach. And that is entirely plausible. And a lot of you may also be thinking, wait, aren't witches supposed to be purged of emotions? Well, a lot of us know that have played the games and read the books that that is not true in any way. I mean, the most common example I can give you is that Geralt does truly love Yennefer and love is an emotion. You see Geralt get angry, you see Geralt get sad, and a lot of you may think that's because of his extra mutations, and for that I can give you a game example. For example, we have Lambert who ends up getting together with Kira. I mean, and in general, witches do have emotions, and they hide behind the fact they don't have emotions to trick people. So it's possible that Geralt wants to avoid becoming emotionally attached to these creatures, as any human would. So the two answers I've come up with, and I hope you've all found that interesting. I said today's video was going to be a short video. If you guys have any theories about this, I'd be really, really interested to hear as this is such an interesting subject and there's a lot of speculation that can go into it but I'd say so far the first answer I said is probably the most generally agreed one and the second one is just a little answer that I thought might be quite nice. But to finally end today's video I'm going to read a conversation between Dandelion and Geralt which is on the subject of Roach and then I'll also read a journal entry about Roach from The Witcher 3. So to begin with the conversation. Geralt. I need to find a name for her. Dandelion. Maybe Roach? Hmm. Good enough. Geralt, hmm? Have you ever had a horse not named Roach? No. And that's simply the conversation. That just shows you that there's no thought in it, and any time Geralt's asked the question, he just bluntly just says no. There's no sort of explanation to it. He doesn't carry on and say, well, no, because of this. He just goes, no. Which shows that he may be hiding something a little, or maybe he just can't be bothered to answer. There's a lot of speculation that goes into these sort of things. So finally, the journal entry. A horse is more to a witcher than merely a means of locomotion. Just ask any bandit who's taken a well-aimed hoof to the head during combat. A Additionally, many a witcher has talked over the nuts and bolts of his current contract with his horse, while staring at the stars shining above the lonely road, though few would ever admit to this. Geralt named his every mount Roach, though no one really knows why, or what Geralt had in mind with this name. When asked, Geralt would dodge the question, or give an evasive answer. Perhaps this had just been the first word that came to his head. Roach, for her part, seemed to accept the name with no reservations. Geralt would grow annoyed, and curse whenever Roach panicked and tossed him in the middle of a battle, as well as when she would suddenly turn a different direction to the direction that he wanted while riding at a full gallop towards some urgent destination. In truth though, he was very attached to her, and would never trade her for any other horse. Not even one which, when summoned, would never stand helpless in front of a seemingly easy, surmountable obstacle, such as a low fence or a stray piece of timber. Not even one which would sometimes, in some incomprehensible fashion, wind up dancing on some peasant's roof. Well, Geralt would say with a shrug, a witch's horse isn't a normal animal. Constant contact with magical beverages and signs must have left a mark. While completing a contract in Tucson, Geralt had the chance to find out exactly how serious Roach took her role, and how well versed in the arcana of the witch's trade she was. He also discovered she was an entirely pleasant conversation partner. Anyway guys, that's the end of today's video. I honestly hope you've enjoyed it. This has just been such a fun little video for me to make. I hope you've all learnt something new, because I honestly have. Going over these theories and things was actually really, really really interesting. And it honestly, because you spend so much time with Roach in the game, you always call her, you have that fun mission in Tucson which I mentioned briefly towards the end of that journal entry, it's just such a cool relationship you have between Geralt and Roach. The amount of horse races you do as well. And now just knowing this little bit more about their relationship is just an interesting piece of information, and I hope you've all learned something new, or at least enjoyed the video. As always guys, be sure to go and follow me on Twitter, I do updates on there every day, I'm going to post stuff on there whenever anything important happens, or if I want to ask you guys anything, so if you follow me on there you'll be able to see when that happens. Also be sure to follow me on Twitch, I plan to play some games on there at some point when I have time. Sorry I haven't played a lot recently, I'm very very busy, but honestly if you follow me on there and then when I start streaming properly, you'll get the notification so you'll be able to watch it. So yeah, go follow me on there. Bear in mind all the links for everything I talk about in this outro are down in the description, and also thank you so so much to the Patreon pledges, you guys are just the best, it's very very kind of you that you donate to me, I just want to say a big thank you to every single one of you guys, all these names you're seeing on screen right now, all the pages that are on here, just all these people are brilliant, so thank 
them all so much and thank you to everybody else who comments and likes on the video as that's just such a kind thing to do and it helps out the channel and it helps out me. So thank you all so much for doing that. I hope you've enjoyed today's lore video. There'll be a Witcher 2 part, the first part ever coming out as the next video. So I hope everybody's excited for that. It's going to be great. And as always guys, I'll see you in the next video.